we are about you guys heading back to Australia. How are you feeling about making the trip back down to Oz? It's always nice to visit Australia. I love the country. I mean, I, 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 I love my country, but uh, if I can choose another country to move to, it is, it is Australia, without a doubt. So, so what is it about Australia that you love so much? Is it the, the weather, the country itself, or the people? What is it that you love? Uh, uh, the weather and the people, because the people are so re- relaxed in some way. It's like, it's like it, 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 almost like there uh, ain't no problems in in, uh, in Australia. <laughs> it's like, yep. of course it is, but uh, it, it's like where yeah, you you guys are very relaxed, and it's especially live when you play live in Australia. The audience and the fans are very thankful for uh, you know for us to be there. It's like. You can see the, their eyes when I'm up on stage, and I see all, all those happy faces are there. They are so glad that we're here and play for them. And uh, in 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 Europe, it's more like a tougher crowd, more rougher, you know. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people will say that they find the Australian crowds absolutely crazy, in that you never know what you're going to get at an Aussie show. Have you found Aussie fans to be pretty crazy and passionate? Yeah. They are, they are. Uh, I remember the last time we played the Prince, uh, or every show we did last time, we had a a ladder up on stage <laughs> where Vic uh, climbed up and, and played on, and uh, all of a sudden he, he looked around and, and there was fans climbing up the <laughs> <laughs> stairs. <laughs> So, and they're stage dived. Awesome, awesome, awesome audience. So, tell us a little bit about this love affair with Australia that the band has experienced, because you guys have got so many passionate fans here. Were you aware of how many fans you had in Australia before you came here the first time? No. No, we weren't. I mean, I remember the first time in 2008, we played in Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, and we were, I was surprised, the first show was in Melbourne, I was surprised because it was such a turn up, turn up for so many people, and I was like, how the hell did this happen? We never been here before. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think our fan base is grow, growing every time we come down. So hopefully, there are going to be even more people this time. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of that's because Australia's got such a rich heritage of of hard rock um, artists ourselves. Were yeah. you were you a big fan of Australian music when you were growing up and and yeah throughout the years? Yeah, I mean ACDC, of course. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Midnight 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 Oil. Yep. Uh, and in in excess, of course. So uh, yeah, you had a great impact. On, on um, you know, the us here in Sweden, like for example. So I love In Excess. So, uh, and you love ABBA. Yes, yeah. In Australia. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, think, I think just about every kid of my age would have had an ABBA album in their household when they were growing up. I know... Yeah. Um, my family was a little bit different because my dad actually worked on the arrival tour that they did here, um, in Australia. So we, they, uh, she did. Yeah. So we cool. certainly had Abba in our household growing up. Uh, imagine the money that you earned, Bjorn and Benny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the Abracadabra, the album that was so eagerly anticipated by your Australian fans, um, Tell us a little yeah. bit about what it's been like to go out and play the tracks off that album live, because that sounded to me like a live album when I listened to it. Yeah, it was. We we recorded, the music is all live, and then I put my vocals on afterwards. Um, but we wanted to to, uh, uh, to do it and make it sound like a live, like a live album. And I think we managed to do that, actually, because it... The, the sound is compared to the "You Can't Kill My Rock and Roll," the, the previous album. This sound on Amber Cadabra is more raw and, and more heavier uh, than the previous one, and uh, 
they are especially forever in the day a song on the album it's so awesome to sing and play live and uh, all of the songs are good to play live but uh that song especially especially that song forever in the day so uh yeah and i the fans we play like four or five new songs in the set uh it's hard when you got so many albums but every time we release an album we play at least four songs from the new album and this time we play five songs so uh but the the audience uh, welcomed it very very much i was going to ask that you guys have got such an amazing back catalog of music now is it getting harder to do set lists for tours now yeah <laughs> yeah that's the, that's the worst thing you know that we've done so many albums because it, it's uh, but uh, we, we talked about it actually uh, a couple of weeks ago because we have songs I mean l- if you look at the Spotify uh, on Hawk Super on Spotify I mean we got like 60 mu- million views on one song and, and you know 14 on one song you have to play those songs because people want to hear those songs yeah so there you have like you know the, the five songs that you see when you um so those five songs are almost every t- in, in every time in the set so so that's five songs now we have to <laughs> take out 11 more songs that's harder that's harder to do because everyone in the band got their own favorite song yep so uh so it's, it's, a, it's a whole lot of democracy when we do that because we we, we uh we not we not fight each other anymore because we're too old for that shit. But um, but but in the end, we are, you know, uh, we think alike. You know. Yeah, you mentioned that you all have a favorite song, and I was thinking I shouldn't ask this track, I shouldn't ask this question because it's like asking a favorite child. But what's your favorite track to play live, and why is that your favorite? Uh. I like my favorite track to play live is You Can't Feel My Rock and Roll. Because that song, it's got everything in it. It's like very, like a arena rock feel to it. And I really like that because it, it's big, it's a big song. Yep. Um, and, uh, okay, I have to choose two. And Forever and the Day, those two are my favorites to sing live. Okay, and why is Forever in a Day? Why is that one of your favorites as well? Because it, it it's it's like uh, I like the stomp on the drums. It's like it's like a, a traditional rock song. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Awesome. So that's the close closest AC, ACDC we got. So. <laughs> yeah. So, what else do you guys like doing away from the stage when you're visiting a country like Australia? Is there something... I noticed that you've got one spare day while you're here. Um, what do you like to do away from the stage? I like to walk around in the city. Uh, this time, I, I, I've got, I brought my uh, my training shoes, and so I'm going to run Yep. In, in, in as much as I can. So, uh, me and the drum tech, we... When we are on tour, we go out and run together. So, uh, so we're gonna do that in Australia this time. So, being being a Melbourne boy, I highly recommend when you're in Melbourne to do a run uh, along the Yarra River or through the Botanical Gardens. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Th- there's actually yeah. a, a public running track here in Melbourne called the Tan, which goes around the outside of the Botanical Gardens, and it's where all the professional sports people go to do their timings for running like all of our footballers and stuff like that so there's a they've actually got a big clock up there's a big clock up at the start finish line and you can actually time yourself to see where you rate amongst the the different famous runners that have run the tan over the years cool (laughs) and and now now it's going to be professional seniors as well yeah yeah add your name to the (laughs) list yeah (laughs) yeah So, yeah, thank you. Um, I will check, check that out. Yeah. So what is it that you like to, to do when you're walking through a city? Do you just like to explore the architecture and stuff like that and get a bit of a look around? Yeah, just see people, you know, see, yeah. 
and, and and you know walk around and it's like oh there's a good bar let's have a beer there and just watch people go by yeah you know i like that I like this you're know, watching people i love i love watching people yeah and it helps that we have great beer here in australia as well yeah, <laughs> you have. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably notice over the last few years we've had what they call micro breweries open up in the city as well. So you can actually go into a brewery yeah. and try their beer. So, yeah. Yeah, we did that last time in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we're gonna do. We're gonna do it now as well. Yeah. <laughs> So what's it like? Yeah. What's it been like for you guys being able to get back out and tour again? Because one of the things we've noticed here, especially in Melbourne, because we were one of the most locked down cities during the pandemic, is people have wanted to get out and embrace live music. But what has it been like for you guys getting out and playing live music after being off the road for a while? It was weird. I mean, it's like in some way. As we talk, if we talk about Hawk Superstars band, in some way the pandemic was good for us because we haven't slowed down yeah. for over 20 years. So it was good for us to slow down, think about what, how we would want to, you know, keep the career going. And, uh, and we got the time to write new songs, uh, without going out touring and you know to distract us and uh so in in that way the pandemic was good but in another way it was fucking crap yeah <laughs> uh so so uh but i remember the first show we did after the pandemic i think it was one and a half year after after it started i was so nervous i was so fucking nervous because we only before that, we only been away like two months top, yeah. you know, from from not touring. So I I ran to the toilet, I pissed, you know, yeah, <laughs> back and forward because I was so nervous. Uh, because I was afraid that the vocals, the, you know, my vocal cords wouldn't, you know, hold. So, uh, but it went great. But it went great. And uh, but but the but funniest thing when I got up on stage, everyone was sitting down. Yep. Because they had to sit down. Uh, but the funny thing is, I asked the security guard about that. So you mean you can't get infected by COVID nineteen if you sit down, but if you stand up, you're gonna die. Wow. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Are you stupid? Are you fucking stupid? <laughs> so, so, but in the end of the end of the concert, everyone was standing up, and the security guards left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, and yeah. I, I think they proved here in Victoria as well just how much people missed live music because the premier of our state actually paid the Foo Fighters to come here and do a show, which was supposed to be the the reopening of Victoria and Melbourne again after the lockdown. So a lot of people were uh, like, hang on a minute, why why is it live music? But I think that's what we needed. I think everybody needed a show like that just to get out and let their hair down for a chance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Because, I mean, music... Because they that's the thing people missed, you know, going to concerts, seeing live bands. But the other, on the other hand, now when the, the frictions are dropped uh, and the pandemic is over uh, there are too many bands touring yeah. now yeah. because I mean a regular working human being has you know that amount of money to spend yep. and they can't choose which, which bands they want to see because yeah. it's so many bands touring so it, it's that's the negative side of it. Yep. Well, I'm sure your fans are definitely going to be um, rushing out to see your shows because you've got such a an amazing fan base here in Australia. And I guess to finish off the interview, what would you like to say to those Aussie fans that are heading along to check you guys out when you're here in Australia, but also to the fans that haven't bought a ticket yet? What would you like to say to them? Um... I want, first of all, I want to thank all the fans for 
waiting for us to come down. And uh, I promise you won't get disappointed. And uh, for you guys who don't have tickets to our shows in Australia, buy that if you want to have a great party, a show with a lot of energy, and a good time. <laughs>